Welcome. Welcome to Hadley Mothers Club Candidates Night. The Hadley Mothers Club mission is to serve Hadley by providing opportunities and support for our youth and members of our community. We are not a profit organization started in 1944 for young mothers to gather socially and discuss subjects of common interest and render public service. The group's first project was establishing a kindergarten class in 1945 with continued support by donating classroom materials in 1946. Since that time, Hadley Mothers Club has continued to support Hadley schools and the community through various funding, fundraising events and programs such as Candidate Night. This year, I'm proud to announce that we are celebrating our 75th anniversary. Among our many events, we are planning <laughs> among many events, uh, we are planning a celebratory tea on May 5th. Invitations to this event have already went out to members, but if anybody knows of any member that may have not gotten an uh, invitation, um, please contact us through our website. It's HadleyMothersClub.org, and um, there's a contact us button there, and um, then just let us know. We'd be really interested to know. Um, for over 30 years, just before the Hadley Town election, Hadley Mothers Club sponsors Candidates Night. This event provides candidates for town office an opportunity to present their platform at a public forum and answer questions pertaining to their candidacy. We expect this event to operate with decorum and respect. We will not tolerate questions or comments that are disparaging to any candidate. The rules were sent to all candidates have been made available as you entered the building tonight. The rules are put up by Hadley Mothers Club and are not subject to debate at this forum. The rules shall be enforced by our moderator and the decision of the moderator is final and not subject to debate. At this time, I'd like to introduce our moderator, Mr. Ob Harris. Ob is an experienced government relations and communications professional who has served nearly 10 years in state and municipal government. He also has an extensive background as a broadcast journalist and is seasoned in government relations, legislative and political strategies and media relations. Ob recently served as the Director of Legislative Affairs and Public Policy for the City of Bridgeport, Connecticut. He currently holds the position of Director of Government Relations and Communications for the Connecticut Department of Public Health. Ob will review this evening's rules and introduce candidates. Thank you. Ob. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, coming out tonight. And um, thank you for all the candidates for coming here as well. Um, and uh, thank you very much to Denise. And thank you to the Hadley Mothers Club for organizing this forum. How about a round of applause for the Hadley Mothers Club? <laughs> um, I will definitely uh, go over the ground rules in a bit. Before we do that, where is Davey Tuno? Come on up, David. David's going to do something very nice. David's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So, ready? Come on, step up. just a little bit ago and 
And I just want to reiterate, just so it's clear, that everybody you see here on stage uh, has taken time out of their busy schedules to make themselves available to you. It's a public service that they're doing by being here so that you can ask questions. And public service is all about being selfless. Uh, nobody who serves in any kind of elected office in the town of Hadley gets paid any money for it. Uh, this is all about uh, doing what's good for the entire community and not thinking about yourself first. So I want us to remember that because it's, it's your right as citizens of the town to ask questions, to be tough on the candidates, to try to get answers. But it's important to remember that people are sacrificing a lot to do this. And so we're not here to make any accusatory remarks, single people out, disparage anybody. And none of that's going to be tolerated. And I do have the ability as a moderator to shut things down if necessary. Um, and if things get really out of hand, we've got a couple of law enforcement representatives in the back of you. Uh, <coughs> Officer, what's your name? Joel Kupian. Joel is here. We've got Fire Chief Spank Mabel over there, but he's more of a observer. He's just going to sit and watch. But anyway. So I'm not expecting anything like that to happen. I just, but, but I just uh, want to make sure that we're all here for what we should be here for, which is a good exchange of ideas and finding out where these candidates stand on, on issues. So um, to the housekeeping stuff, um, any candidate who's not able to be here tonight did have the ability to submit something in writing, uh, stating who they are or why they're running, and that can be uh, presented. Uh, nobody in the Mother's Club or myself is allowed to speak on behalf of any candidate who wasn't able to be here. Each candidate here, uh, we have five minutes for an opening statement. Um, after the candidates finish their opening statements, what we'll do is we'll go to questions from the audience. We have one candidate who's here. She's just getting here now. You want to come up? That's okay. We wait. We'll wait for you, Diane. Thank you. Anyway, grand entrance, grand entrance. So we've got a slot for you right there, Diane. Um, so um, candidate questions uh, for competing candidates for office, which I don't think we have anybody directly competing against each other tonight. But in any case, they can get, they can ask a fellow candidate one question that's based on issues only. Each candidate has a maximum of two minutes for a response. Questions for candidates from the observers, non-candidates from Town of Hadley. They can be submitted to the moderator during the first part of the forum. The way that you get submitted is, in the back there's Kelly Higgins. Wait, wave your hand, Kelly, so everybody can see you. Kelly Higgins is a member of the Hadley Mothers Club. She'll be taking your questions. You can go back there, write them down, pass them to Kelly. Kelly's going to uh, put them in there, in the bin, try to categorize them so that we don't have multiple questions on the same issue or for the same person. And then those will be delivered up to stage, and the second part of the forum will be questions from you. Um, let's see, no literature buttons or type of campaigning, we shall be permitted. Um, ballot questions can also be addressed on a candidate's night. They must be read and explained by a town official or chairperson of the committee sponsoring the ballot question. Presentations to the ballot questions will be subject to a maximum of five minutes. Um, any candidate that does not follow these guidelines will be asked to leave from the forum and will not be allowed to participate in future events. Okay, that's the hard part of the speech. Now, Candidates, I want you to take a look. We have two timekeepers right here in the front row, okay? So they will be keeping track of how much time you've used up. And when they say stop, it's time to stop. And they'll go down for four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. You have like 30 seconds, 10 seconds. So when you really will get your full amount of time. But don't try to go over. There will be other opportunity uh, to fill in, okay? Uh, is that enough on the rules? Good, all right. If I don't do the right thing, they'll yank me off the stage, so I have to be right. Now, um, let's talk about the candidates. So we have a whole list of candidates that's here. If I can find it. There we go. All right, so let's see. Starting on my left, David Moskin is running for, he's running for re-election, um, and he is running for Library trustee. It's a three-year term. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Uh, okay. Then next to David is Mark Dunn. He is running for planning board. 
She's a write-in candidate. It's a term of five years. Next to Mark, we have Heather Klesch. She's running for school committee. It's a three-year term. She's running for re-election. Let's see on my right, David Phil. He is running for re-election. And he's running for select board. That is a three-year term. And let's see, where's John? John's here. John Boskevitz is here. He's running for re-election, too. It's also a three-year term. And, uh, okay, here's the special one. Parks Commission, three-year term, one seat. She's running for re-election. Her name is Diane Kiris jokas Thank you very much Thank you. for being here. All right, how do we start? Just go left or right? Okay. Okay, we're going to just go this way. David, you have five minutes for your opening statement. Come on up. Well, thank you to the Mothers Club. I'm not going to talk about myself. My wife's voting for me, so hopefully I'm in. Um, I'm here just, just to say a word of thanks to the town, the taxpayers, all of you here, for supporting the new library project. So it's pretty remarkable that this town uh, agreed to come up with the matching funds for the state funding that's coming for the new library. You know, the trustees and the library staff were able to get over $3 million from the state to build a new library. We didn't know if the town was going to support it. Some people spoke against it, of course, um, but it's happening. So I just want to send out a word that you're, for all you taxpayers, uh, you're shareholders in this new library, just like the Senior Center. So please use it. This is your investment in your community, in your library. It doesn't matter how old your kids are. There's programs for all ages. It doesn't matter how old you are. There's reading clubs. There's weekend programs. There's um, a shocking amount going on at the Goodwin Memorial Library. We have a whole year still in the old building, and um, if you haven't been in the old building, I understand some people haven't, uh, it's a good thing to visit because it's going to be repurposed and won't be a library anymore. It's a pretty amazing place. So uh, this is just a word of thanks and a word of encouragement to please come and uh, visit your library and use your library. I believe. Um, at, at uh, public schools, librarians are now called information specialists or information technicians. So libraries aren't just about books and videos anymore. It's about um, uh, communication and uh, learning how to tell a story, learning how to do analytical thinking. Um, Hadley Media is um, now sharing the space with the Goodman Memorial Library. So we have more opportunities for students, for people that want to do media projects. It's a perfect fit, a perfect partnership between a library and a community access TV station. The select board's been super helpful. We have a municipal building committee. We have a library building committee. Thank you, David. Um, it's an incredible amount of work to build a, uh, a new library or a new senior center. So a lot of volunteer time, a lot of professional time, a lot of money. It'd be a shame if every one of you and every listener who's hearing me now doesn't participate in the library and its related uh, services. So um, that's really all I want to say. If there's questions, please um, send them up. But again, thank you for your support. Uh, the new library is going to be wonderful. Some of us trustees fought to the end to make it work with the old library and maybe keeping Hooker, and uh, the state just wouldn't go for it. So, so for those of you that are sorry to see Hooker come down, I am with you. I am also sad to see Hooker come down. But um, I think the future is going to be bright for the coming generations. So support your local library. Thank you. Thank you uh, so just, just to point out, just, just for the candidates and for the audience, so if you don't use all your five minutes, it's fine. That means more time for questions in the second part of the uh, forum. I don't know that that's doable. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll check with the, uh, you know, the organizer. Uh, Mark Dunn is next. Mark, running for point. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. My name is Mark Dunn. I'm a writing candidate for the Hadley Planning Board. I am a local architect looking to bring my strong professional skill set and my respectful personality to serve the town of Hadley and help the planning board to be the best that it can be. Um, my wife and I settled in Hadley on Moatic Drive in 1997. I lived there for 14 years uh, and moved back to Hadley last May. I have served on the Hadley Town Highway Garage Feasibility Committee 
I have chaired the Western Mass branch of the U.S. Green Building Council. That's the organization that certifies LEED buildings. And I currently serve on my church's house and property committee. Uh, I earned my architecture degree at Cornell in 1986 and have been practicing architecture in Massachusetts since 1987. I've worked in the private sector for 15 years and in government jobs at the Postal Service, Westover Air Base as a base architect, and at UMass now for another 17 years. I've lived in New Jersey, Washington, D.C., Boston, um, but I have chosen Hadley as my home because of all the quality of life aspects that we all value here, such as the beautiful countryside, the rich history, um, the abundant access to arts and education, and of course, the fresh asparagus, the corn, the berries, the maple syrup, and other goodies that we find in all the local farm stands. Um, like most of you, I celebrate the amazing diversity uh, of offerings here in Hadley. I love that I can take my dog on trail runs or hike up Skinner or mountain bike or cross country ski right out my back door. I say, what's not to love about Hadley? Uh, well, time brings challenges. Uh, Hadley has both enjoyed and suffered the effects of economic and development uh, over the years. But now we have a master plan as well as our evolving bylaws and ordinances to protect the fabric of Hadley and guide our growth in healthy and attractive directions for the betterment of everyone. The planning board has the noble responsibility of protecting the integrity of this town we all call home. I believe, I, or, I bring the knowledge, the experience, sensitivity, and now that my only child is off to college, I also have the time to offer my varied skills sets to help make our planning board the best it can be. I bring over 30 years of experience in design and construction issues in both the public and private sector. I have decades of experience in site design and building design, as well as compliance with federal, state, and local ordinances. I have the training and temperament to be a valuable member of our board. Currently, we have three planning board members who combined have served for a century. That's incredible and I salute them. Um, but also, they've, uh, some of those have hinted that they're not going to serve uh, forever. So I want to join them now while I can still learn from their institutional knowledge. Um, with your votes, I plan to serve the town of Hadley, demonstrate my strengths, and earn your respect each and every time I represent you as an elected official. Um, so I thank you for your attention uh, and your shared commitment to keeping Hadley the town that we have all been proud to call home. Uh, please come out and vote a week from tomorrow, April 9th, and write in my name, Mark Dunn, D-U-N-N, uh, and my address, 13 Highland Circle, for plenty more, and um, don't forget to fill in the oval. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
I uh, work for an employer here in Hadley, Pearson, and have been there for about 21 years as well, um, and have my doctorate in educational measurement here from UMass. So I like being able to apply uh, the skills that I use every day in my work to also uh, help support our schools and um, be able to support the activities there. So a few things, I just want to really thank everyone for the support of the schools that you've shown uh, over the years, uh, all of the programs that we have. We have a lot to be proud of, a lot of academic successes to be proud of, as well as the talent that we have here. And I think that you may have seen over the last uh, year or so that we've really put an effort on trying to retain the talent that we have here in the schools and recruit additional talent here. Uh, a couple meetings that are coming up that I would encourage you to, to participate in. Uh, tomorrow night here, uh, we have a forum as part of our school committee meeting to examine the start time of the schools in that it has been uh, suggested that we may want to look at having Hopkins Academy and Hadley Elementary start at a very similar time, which would be pushing uh, Hopkins Academy to start a little bit later in the day. So we're going to uh, provide an opportunity for parents, uh, students, and faculty who have all provided feedback on this topic in a public forum tomorrow night. Uh, and then April 22nd, we have a public hearing on our uh, fiscal year 20 budget. And so we would encourage anyone who is curious about uh, our budget, what our initiatives are, and what we have, um, uh, have for this coming financial year uh, to come out to that forum. So I thank you once again and um, appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Now we're going to move on to the, we have two individuals running for select board. We have David Phil. And then we have uh, John Moskevitz. I, I don't need to introduce you. So David, why don't you go, and then John can go right in after him. I did want to make one point about uh, write-in candidates, because I worked at the Secretary of the State's office for a few years in Connecticut. If you're doing a write-in, you do have to uh, make it legible enough to, to, uh, to read, and you have to fill in the bubble, uh, as Mark said. But um, there, there are different ways in which when you write the name, if it's the first name, last name, or both, they can be interpreted as a vote. We do happen to have an expert on election sitting in the back of the room. If you have any questions about how writing uh, candidates and writing ballots work, talk to Jessica Spank, able she's the one sitting next to the guy in the uniform. Right back. <laughs> anyway, our town folks here. So, all right, David, why don't you go and then John Glenn right after. All right. My name is David Phil, and I'm running for select board. I was born and raised on Middle Street in Hadley, and I attended Hooker Elementary School, Russell School, and Hopkins Academy while working on a farm on West Street. After graduating from Hopkins Academy, I enlisted in the United States Air Force, where I served for over 10 years in active duty and in reserves, including combat tours in Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom. After serving in the military, I started a successful contracting business, an aviation consulting firm, worked as a corporate pilot, and then for the past 13 years in federal law enforcement. I have a bachelor's degree in government with a minor in public policy, and I'm currently pursuing an MBA in project management. My wife, Brandy, who is also an Air Force veteran, and I have chosen to raise our children, Audra, who's five years old, David III, who's four years old, and Cora, 20 months old, here in Hadley, because we know there's no better place to live and raise children. <coughs> Just about a year ago, I was up here asking for your vote uh, for a one-year term on the select board. And I promised to improve communications, openness, and clarity in town government. I've been diligent about posting information to my official Facebook page as well as creating a monthly email list, the select board summary, that turns hours of meetings, discussions, and votes into a short monthly summary. We've implemented and are in the testing phases for our new public alert system that will keep the public better informed about things like construction, road closures, as well as important community events. But there's still much more to be done. It's been a busy year with the library, senior center, uh, town hall remodeling, moving departments, et cetera. One thing that you'll notice if you watch our select board meetings is that I like to cut through red tape whenever possible. I have a proven track record as a problem solver and as someone who uses creative thinking to get things done. I'm also open-minded and willing to listen to alternative viewpoints. I've published my email and my cell phone for the public because no matter where you stand on an issue, 
If you have something to say about a project or another topic, I want to hear from you. We may not always agree, but I will always be willing to have an honest discussion and treat all residents with courtesy and the respect that they deserve. One of the biggest challenges we will face over the next three years is how to keep our tax rate low while also paying for repairs to aging infrastructure. We have miles and miles of water and sewer lines that have largely been ignored, but are way past their expected lifespans. Town buildings that either need to be repaired, repurposed, or sold off like we're in the process of doing with North Hadley Village Hall. Working to eliminate waste, improve customer service, and bring more products online will be critical to saving money without sacrificing services. No longer can we afford to step back and see what happens in the case of critical projects and hope for the best. But we need to take a hands-on approach to ensure our hard-earned tax money is being used as efficiently as possible. When someone tells me something can't be done or this is the way we've always done things, my response and yours too should be why. I would invite everyone to visit my website, electdavidphil.com, where you can learn more about me as a candidate, review my list of priorities if re-elected to the select board, as well as sign up for my email newsletter and Facebook updates. So I'd like to thank the Hadley Mothers Club for arranging this great event, my brother Richard and his fiance Maria, my sister Jessica, my parents David and Joyce, and for their help on the campaign, and most importantly, my wife Brandy, for her support through all the evening select board meetings, long phone calls with residents and uh, stakeholders from surrounding towns. So as a combat veteran, law enforcement officer, father, business owner, and husband, I've proven my abilities, integrity, and success throughout my life, my life, as well as during the last year on the select board. Let's keep Hadley a great place to live and to raise a family, and I hope to earn your vote on Tuesday, April 9th. Thank you. All right, so I don't repeat everything David said. <laughs> uh, I think we've been working pretty well together on the select board. Um, our differences have been brought out publicly. Everything's open and everybody's aware of what's going on in our community. Uh, we have done a lot of work with the senior center, the library, the fire substation, which we're still working on. And I'd like to see these projects completed and seen through all the way. We, we put a lot of hard earned time in on all three of these and, and I just want to see them built and the folks move into them and use them as Mr. Moskin said with the library, uh, but the senior center also and the fire substation for all the firemen, the volunteers and now our full time daytime firemen. So I hope we just keep moving forward with the town the way we are right now. I know we need to keep our tax rates a little bit low here. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to work through it all. So I would appreciate your vote next Tuesday on the 9th. And thank you all for coming out. Thank the Mother's Club for having this candidate tonight. And I would appreciate your votes. Okay, now we have the uh, three-year term for Parks Commission. Um, somebody needs no introduction whatsoever. Diane Curious Schultz is running for Parks Commission. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Anytime. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow citizens of Hadley. I'd like to take some time to thank the amazing Mothers Club for their invitation to present to those here today and those watching at home via local Access TV. This is truly a wonderful event, and I'm happy to have this opportunity. My name is Diane Karras Chokas. Thank you, Al. Um, and I'm running for re-election of the Park and Rec Commission. And although I'm running unopposed, I'd like to take this opportunity to briefly talk about the Park and Rec Department and its programs offerings. First, I would like to thank the other commissioners, Andy Klopacki and Steve Higgins, and our program director, Jenny Lemberg. They have continued efforts that make the department's mission brought to full uh, fulfillment, and we are bringing quality programs to the citizens of Hadley and beyond. 
It's a great group to work with, and we also are a valuable contribution to the local development of Hadley as a whole. And the Park and Rec Department might be small. We also have a small budget, but we do a lot of great things for the town. With that said, I'd also like to take a moment to say thank you from the entire department to all of our volunteer coaches, assistants, program leaders, local scouts, pro Merido students, and helpers in general, both past and present, for your role in helping to make Park and Rec a truly inclusive townwide service organization. The American Legion, Chief Mike Stanknabel in the Hadley Fire Department, Chief Mike Mason and the Hadley Police Department are huge advocates and supporters of our department, and that is so much appreciated. Our departments work great together and bring fun and joy to our town. I would also like to send a big thank you to all the local businesses who donated items for our giveaway and raffles that we have at our events. Hundreds and hundreds of Hadley kids and adults have participated in the park and rec programs and activities over the years, and we appreciate your continued backing. As a matter of fact, one of my first jobs in high school was being a camp counselor for the Hadley Park and Rec Department at their summer camp. And for those that are interested, help and volunteers are still needed in, uh, for our ongoing programs, supporting the organizations and initiatives that we have. Both the Friends of Park and Rec and the Friends of Zaturka Park are very important to our department and they're both in need of volunteers. These days it seems that volunteers are harder and harder to come by and both these organizations are great ways for you to contribute to the community with minimal time involvement. So please contact us if you're interested in helping out. We continue to provide a number of traditional programs including year-round youth athletics with an emphasis on participation and development. Also offered are a number of non-sports activities, several hands-on learning and educational programs, after school, school vacation programs and events. The department also offers adult programs and events and is always developing new program offerings. Please check out our town website or the Facebook, po uh, Facebook page for an updated programming list and calendars. I've been a Park and Rec's Commissioner since April 2013. During this time, we've seen lots of changes and challenges. While normal operations continued, the department's office was relocated to a small space within the Senior Center, given the status of North Hadley Hall. In the past weeks, the Park and Rec office has now been located over to the Town Hall. There are benefits of this change. Of course, being in Town Hall, there's a lot more visibility. However, the department has lost its dedicated program and activity space in the North Hadley Hall, losing the space to running programs that had been present in the North Hadley Hall for many years. We continue to explore alternatives so that we can maintain these programs and offer them to the town. Throughout these changes, we have pers persevered, and in 2018, we found ways to reduce our budget and create income to help programs affordable to the family of Hadley, families of Hadley. We've also institu instituted a brand new computer system, HadleyRec.com, for online registration and payment. We also have some wonderful news. Although it has been a long process with the state, the Hadley Park and Rec Department has been working with Hadley Kids Incorporated and the Hadley School Administration to take over the school after school program. We're not quite there yet, but we're very close. We always look to our constituencies. All the Hadley citizens who have participated in our programs or have had a child, grandchild, or relative that has used Park and Rec to contact their elected officials to support the department in the current climate of business space and funds allocation. 10 seconds, skip that. Uh, in closing, <laughs> I, was, I respect the power of volunteer organizations. Our Park and Rec is what we, as a community, put in it. And I'm committed to supporting Park and Rec. Although I own and operate a business in town and I'm the secretary of the Happy Mothers Club, the Park and Rec department has been a top priority of mine. I'm thrilled to be part of such a great department that does so much for our happy citizens. Thank you for your time and consideration and I ask for your support for the department and my re-election as Park and Rec's Commissioner. <laughs>
We'll be right back up here in just a few minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you for everybody who submitted questions. I'm going to start just like we did from um, going from your right to your left on stage as the questions were asked for. Um, we have some questions that. <laughs> they do. Um, let's see. We've got. Uh, a couple questions for planning board, one for park and rec, a couple questions for select board, and we have one that's for everyone. So I'll start with the one that's for everybody, because I think it's sort of a universal thing that a lot of people want to know about. So this one says, I don't know what it says, especially planning board, but since it says everyone, we'll just, we'll take a crack at it. Uh, going from, well, let's do the opposite direction, because it's for everyone. So we'll start with Diane, we'll work our way down. Um, all the way over to uh, David. So the question is, how do you plan on ensuring that, oh, let me correct myself. So everybody will get two minutes for their answer. Okay, two minutes. Our time can be great. Here's the question. How do you plan on ensuring that all residents of the town know that they will be treated equally regardless of their race, religion, gender, or sexual orientation? Let's start with you, Diana, before we're going down. Two minutes. Thank you for the question. And I think that it's evident in Park and Rec's history and who we have as commissioners and the director that everyone will be treated equally. We're actually dealing with a current issue right now over with the after school program where we're working through um, allowing everyone to be part of that program, I guess, at a high level. And we're working hard with the school administration the town government to be able to make things happen smoothly and efficiently for all children to be able to participate in that. Um, if we've ever had an issue brought to our attention, it's been addressed, it's been addressed usually obviously with a family member um, and with the Park and Rec Commission and the current um, director at the time. So I feel that everything that we have been done that has ever been brought to our attention has been addressed and I think going forward, I know the morals and ethics of fellow commissioners as well as the director and we want to include everyone being that have a school choice there are even children from other neighboring towns and we're inclusive of them to participate in the programs as well and we share programs in towns that are over the border in Amherst and Northampton um, we've done soccer leagues with them and see ball and things of that nature so I think that we're very welcoming the more the merrier um, we definitely don't have any discrimination that's been happening that I'm aware of, and if it was, it would be totally addressed um, again through the proper channels. On your time, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the past six years, I don't think we've had any major issues. We've got real strong ethics, uh, laws through the state that we try to abide by. Uh, myself, with all my conflicts with the DPW and the select board, I've learned a lot about the law and what we can do and what we can't do. And I've kept myself out of trouble for six years now. I think I can do it in another three. <laughs> so I just hope we can open conversation about all the issues throughout the town for everyone. Thank you. I'll speak from a select board perspective over the last year. I think that as a board, although we certainly don't agree all the time, uh, we do a very good job of ensuring that everybody's heard, the different viewpoints are, are, are voiced, uh, regardless of whether or not we agree with them. I think that um, uh, we do, you know, we haven't had major issues over the last year, for sure, but uh, on the board. Uh, I think a lot of that is the open communication and sort of the checks and balances that we have on each other. And I know that certainly the, the five of us that are on there now uh, are, you know, if, if someone was to be out of line in any way, we would 
certainly let the others know it. Uh, from a personal perspective, from a professional perspective, um, I hire and uh, employ people based on their abilities. I don't care what their race, religion, or origin is. Uh, I believe uh, merit is the way to go, and that's how I conduct my personal business and my personal life. So. Less and less discriminatory 
with, uh, with every year we have as we grow older and older. So let's just be smart and let's appreciate um, God's wonderful diversity and welcome diversity and have it. It's good for everybody. Thank you very much. Okay, next uh, question is going to be for Mark for uh, planning board. And the question is, how can the planning board work towards realizing the town master plan, especially the walkable bridge town center? Well, obviously, one of the challenges is funding. I mean, if we had all the money in the world, we could put in the sidewalks, we could do, you know, I've, I've worked with the Mass Historical Commission in the town of Lee, and we, I restored their, their town hall. And while I was in that, they had this you know, wonderful block grant that you know, did their sidewalks and, and streetlights. Uh, I don't see that coming out of our budgets with things that you know, we have on our plate ahead of us. We've already heard about the infrastructure, deferred um, maintenance, things like that. Um, but we can, uh, I can't legislate for the planning board, but for the planning board, we can um, suggest changes and edits and additions to our, our bylaws, which would require a new project to, um, to basically put on them the cost of improvements instead of on our taxpayers. So I think that's probably the best option that comes to I had to think about this one. Um, so I think we have to balance. We like to do a lot of things, but we also don't want to price out the people of Hadley. And it's balanced. And what we can do is try and make our zoning ordinances call for more of those improvements instead of just taking what we get um, that needs to be better. Thank you, Mark. Okay, next two questions are for the candidates for the select board. Um, okay, let's, first what we'll deal with is the question related to the town budget. So this, the question there appears to tell us a very serious structural deficit that is not getting better. Now, the questioner claims it's due primarily to salaries and wages. What can we do? Now, I haven't taken a serious look at the budget, so again, I want to qualify that. That's from the perspective of the question. Budgets are always a challenge, and we certainly have some growing challenges with meeting our financial demands. As I mentioned in my speech earlier, with the infrastructure and balancing, keeping the tax rate low, uh, new uh, capital projects that are underway, things along those lines. Uh, I would disagree that salaries and wages are the reason for our budget deficit. As somebody that was just involved with the hiring of a new DPW director, I can tell you that one of the challenges we have in this town is that what we pay uh, our county employees is, in many cases, much less than surrounding towns. And so, uh, from a recruitment perspective, it makes it very difficult to find qualified candidates that are willing to come here and work in town of So, uh, yes, uh, we do have problems with the budget, how we're going to pay for things in the future. But slashing salaries or positions is not necessarily the way to do it. Um, obviously, everything should be a possibility. So there's nothing wrong. In fact, we're in the process of a uh, wage and position evaluation in town hall now. Where all the positions in the town are being looked at, whether they're scope of work or salary, to make sure everything matches up. Maybe some people are paid too little, maybe some people are paid too much. But it's a good chance for us to review everything and make sure that. 
like I said, over the next three years, the hardest thing to do is going to be finding a way to pay for the infrastructure and capital projects and still keep our tax rate low, which is one of the main things that makes that decision. Church 
out of Article 97 recreational use protection. Pretty dense policy question. Well, you like the part of that. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. All right. Can I take it All right. So, we love any type of land that the children and citizens of Haven can use. So, I am not totally familiar with uh, Article 97 recreational use protection. Um, the top of my head with that, but um, I welcome any properties that Park and Rec could have under our rec. We're looking to preserve more and more land um, in our town, in my opinion, um, and I like seeing that. And if we can somehow create something towards a sale, whereas that's not part of it, that would be great. And I'm not sure that. Uh, directly answer the question, but we would love another ball field for the space to be able to have uh, functions or let people have functions in town. I thought we were going to amend the rules just a little bit because David actually wanted to address the question as a candidate for uh, select votes. So the ball field that is in question is next to North Abbey Village Hall, which we're in the process of selling uh, because we've, the, the townspeople have decided that's something that needs to go. We as a select board have decided that. Uh, we have picked a, a professional realtor to handle the sale of that property uh, because it was decided that it was, um, although it's historic and it's a North Abbey landmark, it's not something that the town has used for any longer or the board needs to use. So the question is that ball field, um, apparently a long, long time ago that land was taken by eminent domain. And so in order to sell off the actual ball field or turn that ball field land into something other than a recreational field, there's a whole process that needs to be gone through. Um, part of the reason that it's not used very often for literally, when I was a kid, we used to play breaking games. We used to be chasing balls into the 47 uh, all day long during games and uh, balls going into car windshields and everything else because of the tight constraints of the location. So, um, my personal opinion, uh, it needs to go as part of the sale of that property to bring the most possible possible <coughs> value and revenue back to the taxpayers and to the townspeople as part of the sale. Uh, that property is going to be worth a lot less with all that land not part of the sale and all that land some sort of ball for the next door. It's going to uh, restrict the number of possible buyers and reduce what we can bring back to the town. Thank you, David, for addressing that uh, question. Very, very interesting uh, issue we're facing. Okay, so that's it for the questions. I want to call on Denise Devine, who's president of Hadley Mothers Club, and she'll help bring our answer to the Um, so I'd like to thank uh, some folks who made this uh, night possible, um, the staff at Hopkins Academy, um, Drew Hutchinson, and the staff at Hadley Media, um, Chief uh, Mike Mason, and the members of the Hadley Police Department, um, David, who helped us tonight with the pledge. Um, he is, uh, we do sponsor one of the um, uh, individuals, the students that go to uh, boys uh, slash girls state. So um, we're very proud of that. And um, Bob Harris, um, our moderator, and all the candidates who participated tonight and, um, and served in the town. Um, and um, we wanted to also say that um, the, let's see, as a reminder, that having the town election is Tuesday, April 9th, here at Hopkins Academy. The polls open at 9 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Um, everyone, please come out and vote. Um, the um, other thing that we want to mention that school is in session, is in session that day. Um, so we'll try to reserve as much parking in the front as possible uh, for, 
for voters to park. And um, after 2 o'clock, obviously, it'll be a lot more parking um, available. Um, absentee ballots are available until noon. Uh, before election, Monday, April 8th, and at the town clerk's office. At the town clerk's office. Um, questions, they can call Jessica at the town clerk's office, and the phone number there is 584-1590. So that's um, information about um, uh, voting at that day. And um, we are also having, um, at the end of the month, uh, having Lunch Club sponsoring the Recycling Day at the LF Hadley Elementary School. And if you want information, we have suppliers in the back of the room. And um, on our website, there's information. Um, there's also other uh, groups that left flyers for uh, fundraisers they're doing in town. So if you'd like to pick up a, a few of those or at the, the table as you leave the um, hall, um, we'd like you to support those groups also. So, um, Thank you to Denise, and thank you to the Happy Mothers Club for this important community event. Just a reminder, this program will be rebroadcast by Hadley Media. Check out their website for more information at hadleymedia.org. And uh, anybody who was not able to make it tonight, you can watch the <coughs> rebroadcast, hopefully in between now and April 9th. If you have any questions about absentee ballot availability, or how to fill out a writing candidate, uh, uh, any other technical questions having to do with elections, you know, polling is going to be in here, or it usually is, go see Jessica, town clerk's office, or, or ask her. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight and for being a good audience, asking good questions. I want to thank the candidates for taking time out of their busy schedule to be here. And again, Round of applause for the Happy Mother's Club for really pulling together this night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.